Hey everybody, it's your pal Drew, Drew, Drew. I'm going to tell you what I like, and I hope you like it too. Your pal Drew. So, uh, I'm not going to get a career at the bro building for making up songs and stuff, so I will do what I know best, and that is comical books. Uh, one of my favorite comics that was very short-lived was called The American. It was published by Dark Horse Comics. Uh, it came out in... 87 or 88 i know this is this is a four issue reprint of the original mini series uh and it's by chris warner and it's hard to see but it's 1988 so uh, it must have taken off pretty well uh, uh i first learned of this i think cliff biggers might have mentioned it in his uh weekly uh comic shop news uh, there was some kind of buzz about it and uh the whole premise is if you know, Captain America had been around since uh, the Cold War era, I mean, the, the 50s and such, and it wasn't just one guy. It was like a, a platoon of guys who were basically cannon fodder, and they used you know, the next applicant would step in, and uh, the public was none the wiser because uh these people that were chosen they had a certain body t type certain they could get a little bit of facial reconstruction but they were very you know muscular football type guys and uh so uh you know if one dies then someone else takes its place it takes its place uh the incentive is a combination of things i mean besides adulation uh they have uh participation in toy and t-shirt uh you're what do you call residuals it it sounds crazy as shit well and it is but 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 uh mark ver Heiden, sorry if i can't say his name right uh and the amazing amazing chris warner does the pencils and inks of this issue i think this was like one of the last things chris warner did before he became art director at dark horse comics uh, he has his own book called black cross and uh between that and this i guess they just saw they just saw a lot of you know they knew they had their guy so beautiful cover beautiful cover i'm assuming he had colored it it looks very it looks almost like he used markers or uh not not even paint but maybe colored pencils but either way it looks really great really great um so there's the opening uh first cover beautiful 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 dark horse is like they are like a blue chip company they they i don't i can't think of them any publishing any shit and they've been around since 86 and everything they've done is high quality uh, and there's a strong argument that uh the star wars uh series and uh the dna indiana jones series that mini series that they did uh, over the years was superior to just about everything else uh i mean the original trilogy and then the uh, uh what is it the al williamson uh of the art of the he did the second and third movie but uh dark horse uh, they took over after a while it, it was 104 issues of spider man um, Spider-Man, listen to me, Star Wars, and it petered out. It was like 1986, and, you know, uh, we were still, you know, a decade away from any new um, Star Wars stuff. And I love, love this, this rendering is incredible. So some ancient uh, man, uh, Asian guy, hands him a Chinese box, a box within a box, inside a box, and uh, he basically which is you know he says that'll be like an insight to your life uh it's hard to, it's more than that but i can't aptly explain it right now um well what are these guys doing here well uh one guy he says i got concussion and flash under the sliding doors it's some fancy magnesium stuff behind the back row of chairs put together a cue sheet for transmission in 10 minutes no screw-ups each time I want the beef in full armor. Go with the riot package. Tell Cummings to get coverage on Tri-X and Extra Chrome. USA Today uh, is doing a color spread. Well, there is your uh, co-creators. 
um, there's a lot of these kind of parody of uh, early comics, uh, kind of before Big Bang comics came along, and I love the Big Bang books, so anything that refers to that sort of stuff. Well, it starts off with uh, no comic books. Well, we find out why. There's these uh, terrorists that, he says, you know, American comic books are military propaganda and much too expensive. <laughs> they took my comic. He's right, and they are too expensive to hush up. Hope to God someone's coming. Well, they sneak their they sneak their slab of beef, aka the American, uh, crashes into the airport. Good entrance, don't blow it now. Drop on you, sorry, sacks sacks of spit. <laughs> back then, you had you probably get away with shit nowadays, especially indie books. But back then, people were still. Uh, I don't know, uh, fairly conservative about uh, curse words. What's cool is, is this illusion that um, that the American has superpowers, but he says he get, he's working in tangent with guys who are special effects uh, experts. Uh, blow the door, take the pictures, uh, plant the explosives, cue the talent, and all so that glorified Hercules clone can look good for Dan Rather. So as a result, boom, so this artificial charge is supposed to give people the idea that the American has superpowers. Um, they're ready to leave because, okay, friends, uh, presents for everybody, mementos of, of the siege here. You look like a large, what, are you crazy? What the hell are you doing? Make it a buck, McLaughlin. T-shirts were off 15% last month, so keep the cameras rolling. That's nice. Nobody messes with my financial security. Chairs. We got a dud, boss. He's lost his power. Open fire. Well, he goes to head back to the plane. And he does a pretty good job dodging it. And that this little kid who was in the airport, he sees him. There's nothing to get through my thick hide except Teflon bullets. And the kid witnesses it and understandably is traumatized by it. So, uh, I, you know, I love, this is a black and white comic, and it was done as a black and white co comic. So there's so much you could see in the um, the rendering, the inking and such, which, you know, I have my inkerly prejudices as a long-standing inker for all the funny books out there. Um, anyway, they're having a press conference with the American. We'll join us in a moment, the little kids there. But, mister, the American's dead. He got shot, and then, hey, that seems unlikely, Perry. Good to see you again. And the kid gets a heart attack. Turns out he had a uh, predisposed, uh, uh, he had a heart, heart conditions from, uh, for a variety of reasons. You know, usually, like, he was, what did they say, what did they say? Okay, let's read it together. Um, uh, basically, they said the body, uh, he suffered from acute cardiovascular blockage, a result of sedentary lifestyle and a habitual abuse of Eskimo pies. So anyway, our main guy is not the American, it's a reporter. He wants to get inside knowledge and because he, he can't get that kid's face out of his mind. And he's with uh, a co-worker and, uh, who he has the hots for, but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't really act on it. Um, you're really interested in this one, aren't you? It's a kid, isn't it? Maybe I'm crazy, but the Americans still mean something to me. I drank Coke. I drank Coca. <laughs> Out of his, uh, excuse me, I drank Coca out of his American cup, watches TV show. So she has some information. He goes, What's in it for you? Well, maybe I had an American cup when I was little. So there's a lot of cynicism going on there. And cynicism always makes good for stories. Um, I like how he's not drawn as like a, you know, a tightly built guy. This guy, Dennis Huff, uh, he's got a bit of a beer gut. And they do these throwback. You know stories much like Big Bang would. Um, well, there is a another appearance by the last American that we saw, and the speech is cut because of the uh, mic problems. And this one guy throws a bomb at the stage. This is top-notch artwork. Look at that. That's just so the rendering. The woman's face, the flag, all the debris, and 
that right there looks like something you'd see on uh i don't know war footage or something but that's just so it's so real it's astonishing um anyway don't go to american number two i don't want to spoil too much good lord chris warner is inking penciling and inking himself and uh you know there's this phony uh you know not only the comic books but there was phony movies that made the americans seem like uh you know uh, like a real superhero you know, come on kid the yankees are playing tonight and adrian's apple pie is still waiting on us to a la mode sure kid sure all the a la mode you want um and dennis who had been dry for uh three years he breaks down and uh he he back falls or falls back well hang in there everybody hang in. it's worth it trust me well, there goes the American just stepping out. And somebody says, uh, they want to know how you're feeling. Feel? What kind of question is that? And uh, well, our pal here says, hey, American, why the cover-up? Beirut, Chatsworth, what's really going on? Uh-oh, someone farted. Um, that sort of remark is typical of the irresponsible responsible sensational reporting that has blah 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 I want to answer that question so uh, this version of the American he's a little uh, you know he's he's a little uh, more independent he goes get your hands off me the people deserve an answer the American has fought hundreds of battles and seen good men die and always for a reason always for freedom so I'll leave uh, tons of security takes him down he says, and the American's laying sideways. He goes, they're good men, good men, all of them. I'll jump ahead a touch because uh, I'm not going to give you everything, but man, look at that imagery. Um, well, well, our pal Huff and uh, and Dennis, they, they connect and they start talking about the, the secret. They both want to blow the whole... American operation wide open and they're talking at this diner and uh, a couple of the suits show up ready to kill him uh, nobody wants to know any I'm surprised to see you here McLaughlin I figured you were done doing location work I gave you every chance boy and then you break from me going public telling people you're the American I'm putting those lies to rest but the American, he knows the trick, and here comes another version, or the, should we say, the latest version. This surprises me. Hey, Barney, I guess you won the lottery. What the hell's happened to you? Man, you're blowing it. Yeah, Phillips, go for it. No, let the suit do it. We need pictures for proof. How long have you been here? I bet Granger's got the whole place wired. Easy access stuff. Floor, maybe something behind the bar. Hey, man. Make it easy, man. I don't want to. Front wall! You got it. <laughs> so you beat them at their own game. Are you crazy? This doesn't have to happen. And, uh, you know, still, the bad guys are still around. <laughs> and uh, our version of the American says, Floor Granger now! Hell with it. The floor goes, Phillips, I don't care how you do it. Just stop him. And, uh, well, he says, I can't work with blind inform with bad information. And uh, Huff's there saying, one word in your chest will look like an alien outtake. And uh, how the hell does this work? Be careful, those charges are small when they detonate them separately. But together, uh, sounds like fun. Well, anyway, they head out. Everyone's running, and then all of a sudden, Kid America shows up. He was a teenage sidekick, uh, mostly for PR purposes during the Cold War, and but now he's all grown up, and he's loaded for bear. They go into his car. He says, uh, they're being plum irresponsible. Time to get Sam. Who is Sam? Surface to air missile. So, man, Chris Warner's art, Mark Hines. It may look like he's overriding, but no, no, no. Every every word counts. It's just so it, it's such a great 
combination. Um, well, then you see the plaques of all the guys who portrayed the American over the years. And Kid America, who is this guy all grown up, one of his sons was one of the characters uh, who portrayed the American and fought like a superhero. That is so heavy. And, uh, um, and things I'm not spoiling for you because there's so much more going on. There's so much great stuff going on. Man, I love that. Well, that's about as far as I'm going to get. Uh, but uh, anyway, there's a little page here with... Hang in there, everybody. I thought it was... Oh, maybe it was here or somewhere else. Uh, but it's just got beautiful art. Beautiful story, beautiful art. Um, I really recommend it. Uh, they've only reprinted it, gosh, like 15 years ago in this uh, manga size trade paperback. Beautiful Dave Dorman cover. 92. Yeah, that was from one of the miniseries. Uh, the book continued for up until like issue 8 or 9, and then I guess the sales didn't warrant a continuation. Uh, and the reason they even continued is because, uh, you know, the American and uh, Huff, the uh, reporter, they still hadn't gotten the goods on the, the really bad guy with the, uh, the black suit and the beard. And uh, they're trying to bust them together. And they sort of become fellow travelers. A little bit of Mike Mignola action there on one of the Dark Horse mini series. Um, so, this is you know, scumbag who ran everything and he's really playing public relations up well. He goes, I promise to tell the truth at the hearings, and uh, all I ask is a little peace and quiet. My 10 year old is studying for a math quiz tomorrow, and by golly, she's sure to pass. So, he's just he knows how to work the media, and uh great stuff there's there's some really cool surprises in here well also um chris warner took up being the um art director so we had other new artists like grant mine mine or meme i apologize i'll have to ask him sometime and he ended up doing uh the shield for um dc's version of the archie heroes mlj heroes uh and he's also done some other work as well um but again, the black and white stuff is just so great. I love duotone. I love shading. Um, okay, and then there's also uh, a short story involving a, a brand new kid named Brandon Peterson. <laughs> and uh, he's a friend of mine from Cross Gen. He's probably going to kill me for even bringing this up. Because, <laughs> you know, your early stuff, you're always kind of, eh. I don't like to show my early stuff, too, you know, for the same reason. Um so it goes on and on for a bit i think dougie braithwaite does some work uh so uh yeah check it out it's really good stuff um this came out you could probably get it super cheap i would love to see a large collection a, a regular size collection hardcover soft cover uh of the whole series uh, it was all black and white i think until the last mini series which uh it's a long story um but anyway that's the american check it out you probably get it real cheap on ebay and i say that only because i'll see a lot of comic stores would be uh stocking that that up because uh everyone forgot about it except me and uh i wanted to share that with you and uh and uh i think you'll enjoy it it's really 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 good writing and art and the last time i think we saw chris warner do some of his uh, fantastic work before he became art director and uh that's it everybody sorry i ran over long but there was a lot to cover and uh <sighs> you have a good day night evening morning <sighs> Ooh, see ya <laughs>